Hello, welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. This is Foundry VTT version 12, and this is video number two in our little automation mini series. Let's call it that, shall we? So in the previous video, just a little bit of an introduction to what we mean by automation, and we talked about some of the modules that we will be looking at through this series. So we want to start on the first of those modules, which is, well, it's the core module that we can't really do anything else without for this automation method we're looking at is MIDI QOL. So uh, you can see that I've got that installed there. And in order to install that, it will pretty much demand that you need those other three as well. Excuse me, doing a little hiccup in the middle there. So we need socket lib and lib wrapper, even though you won't actually ever see what they are doing. They are in the background. They help the mods talk to each other and talk to Foundry. All very technical in the background. You don't need to worry about it. But if you don't have them installed, it will fall over. So it will install those uh, automatically for you. And also DAE, which comes hand in glove with uh, MIDI QOL because it powers a lot of the functions and enables MIDI QOL settings to actually do their stuff. So in case you're not aware, on any of your modules, when you're looking at it, this little information icon, if you hover over it, it will pop up and it will give you a link to the GitLab um, where you will be able to find more information about that particular mod, um, who wrote it, when it was last updated. Um, there might be a little bit of information about what it does. There might be a complete full wiki page and guide for some of them on what it does um, and some how to do this and, and things like that. So it's always worth having a look if it's a new module um, or one you're not particularly familiar with, go and have a look. Uh, we know that for Ripper in particular, he does really, really good documentation. Um, it's, it's always solid and it's always up to date, but many other modders do that as well. So anyway, we are looking at MIDI QOL. So I don't need to save my settings because I've already got it installed. Now in the previous video, just as a reminder, we did a, a, a silly, silly? We just did a, a little tiny combat between these two creatures here. Let's roll their initiative um, so that we could see how it normally works. Um, and we just yeah we just went backwards and forwards now i've got midi qol installed now so you can go watch the uh, that video um it has got timestamps in it so you can go and see that if you're not familiar with foundry if you're very new to foundry um you need to go and see that if you're new to automation you probably already know how the basic foundry works um, one thing I should point out, of course, is just a reminder, I did mention it in that first video, but if you skipped it, we are in version 12 of Foundry and we're on the D&D game engine 3.3.1. This is currently the stable versions you need to be on if you want to use automation. Uh, if you're still on version 11, you, chances are your automation will work, but it might work slightly different to what's going to be in this video series. Uh, and I know a lot of people stayed on version 12, Earth uh, version 11, because they didn't want to break their automation. By the time we get to the end of this mini series, you'll have a really good idea to be able to say, actually, I can update now. Um, the modders are working on version 12, D and D edition 3.3.1. Um, that's what they're working on at the moment. So that is considered to be the stable. Um, the stable platform for running your games on with automation at this time. Okay, so enough of that. Let's go look at configure settings. So we're going to particularly look at this MIDI QOL settings. And there's, there's hundreds of settings in here all together, uh, which is why this gets really complicated. So we're going to break it down and we're going to look at it in little pieces. Because if I just go here is my game fully automated, that's how you use MIDI. That's really not going to help you decide how you want to run your games, what to automate, what not to automate, and how to make those changes. So I've said it previously in other videos, is don't use mods unless you actually understand what it's doing and what you want it to do. What do you want to get out of it? Because um, otherwise you can get your, uh, your knickers in a twist, to use that phrase, and it can get really confusing. So, 
<clears throat> we're not going to look at these top four right now. We're going to look at some of these uh, other options down here. And the very first one of those is enable role automation support. And it says underneath, I know it's small, it says if enabled, automation of roles can be configured in the workflow setting panel. And that's the very first thing we're going to look at is when we are going into combat, for example, uh, under without automation, what we do is we double click our character sheet. We then click on the weapon, which brings up a message box in chat. We then click on attack. We then click on whether it's um, whether it's advantage, disadvantage or normal. Uh, and then it will roll. If we've hit, we then need to click on the damage button, then select whether it's normal or if it's critical damage. Uh, and then the DM hits a button to apply that damage. So we're talking, what was that? Without opening the character sheet, that's eight separate button clicks. That's, that's quite a lot. So what we can do using automate role automation support is reduce the number of those clicks that we need to do. And we can do it in stages. You know, instead of it being eight, we can reduce it to six or four or two or none. <laughs> Uh, depending on the settings we go for. So that's what we're going to focus on in this one. Um, and we, So we're not going to look at any of the rest of these at the moment because we don't really need to worry about them for this purpose. Uh, let me, let me, uh, I've, yep, I've only got my uh, initiative in there that I just rolled. Let me clear that chat. Um, if we open this workflow settings, this is where most of the settings are actually hidden. Let's uh, get that out of the way so it's a bit clearer what we're looking at. And you can see across the top here, there are lots of different sections. There's the Game Master section, Player, Workflow, Concentration, Reactions, Miscellaneous, Mechanics, Rules, and Quick Settings. Woo, there's a bunch of them. And within any of those, there's lots and lots of other options in there. So again, it, it can be overwhelming. So let's start with Quick Settings, because this is a good place to start. Um, Tim Posney, who is the author of this module, has very kindly realised that us mere mortals will get very easily confused. So he's given us some shortcuts for us to handle some of those settings. So the top one is full automation. You click that and it's going to change the settings to give you full automation. However, that doesn't mean that's exactly the right one. You may still need to tweak with some of the settings to get it how you want. So again, I would suggest that these are really, really useful, but you need to understand what it is it's actually changing for you. And that's the purpose of these videos. We can also turn off. Da -da, I'm going to click that and turn off all of that automation by clicking one button in that quick setting. Come back. Yep. So no automation, all roles manual. We can say, actually, I just want the game master. Uh, attack and damage roles to be automatic. Um, or I can set them to manual. I can change the player ones to be automatic or manual. Uh, automatic hits, saves and damage application. Uh, no hits, saves and damage application. Reaction processing on, on, turning on concentration. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that we can do here. But we are mostly interested in this game master attack and damage automatic. That's what we want to look at here. So I'm going to click this. And it replaces it with this little box here that says these are the settings it is changing for us. Game Master Automatic Roll Attack. Yes. Changes it from false to be true. Game, uh, sorry, Game Master Auto Fast Forward Attack. Yes, do that. Auto Roll Damage. Yes, if it hits. Fast Forward that damage roll. Yes. Auto Apply Item Effects. It's off. It goes to Apply Remove. Game Master, remove the chat card buttons, remove all of them. So, so what the heck is that doing? This is why we need to understand it. So I've clicked that and it's changed some of my settings for us. Let's have a brief look at some of these things across the top before we actually show that in action. There is the ability to use some optional game rules. If I tick this, <gasps> there's more options in there. We're not going to look at that today. We've got some mechanics here. So this might be something you want to add additionally on here to do with uh, when a, when an actor falls below a certain percentage of health to do something. 
and I like to use this one to say when they fall below 50% of the health, give them a bleeding condition. Give them an icon that shows that they're bleeding. That's what I like to do. Um, it gives my players that idea when they're wailing away at that um, that ogre. It's like, oh, actually, we can see that it is actually being injured now. We can see it is taking damage. It just gives them that little bit of feedback without being precise. Uh, there's other things we can do. When you hit zero hit points, players, do the, are they dead? Um, do they become bleeding? Do they become unconscious? And what about Game Master controlled? Do they become dead? That's quite normal. That's normally what you would do. So there's a few things in here you can play with. I'm going to turn these off because that's not the purpose of uh, this particular video. But uh, it's worth having a look through these and having a little play. If you can hear a dog barking in the background, I do apologise. It's not actually my dog. <laughs> it's somebody else's. So under the miscellaneous heading here, again, is everywhere, everything that we don't really... Right, Tim wasn't sure where else to put, so it's all under here. Um, about using macro sheets, condensing damage rolls, putting on extra buttons and things like that. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, display confirmation buttons after rolling attack and damage, auto complete workflow. I do tend to turn that one on just because it makes sure everything finishes properly. Um, again, don't need to worry about that at the moment. We'll come back to it. We've got reactions. So, you know, if you're you know, attacks of opportunity and things like that. We've got concentration from when we've got spells. We're not looking at the moment, but we have got this main workflow. So this talks about targeting, how targeting works, uh, how templates work, um, require targets to be selected. So require tokens to be targeted before rolls. Uh, on never means you never need to have a target when you do your attack. Well, hang on a minute. In combat, I always want them to have a target for their attack. How do you know if you hit that goblin if we don't know the goblin you're attacking? Yeah, so I always have that on. Um, so that hasn't been done by the auto settings. Weapons attack a single target. So weapons with no specific specification on targets. So you swing that sword, it can only attack one target unless it's a magic sword that allows you to do, I don't know, a, a sweeping edge or something to hit multiple targets. But that would be on the sword. So generally, a normal sword, you're only allowed to attack one target. So I'm ticking that on. Okay, that just helps. Um, special item effects we don't need to worry about. Automatically check if an attack hits the target. So it says underneath, check if an attack roll hits the selected target. Damage is rolled if one or more targets is hit and auto roll damage is enabled. Well, we've got auto roll damage. I want to change this uh, and I can change it so everybody can see the results or just a game master. I'm going to have just a game master. Do I want to roll a separate attack for each target? Generally speaking, yes. Uh, and do I want to display the target AC? Let's click that on. So it just makes it a bit easier for you. Auto check saves. We're going to look at saving throws in a different video, but we can automate that. We've got a section here about damage and about auto apply damage to the target. And we can say no, don't do it. No, but give us the damage card. Or no, give us the damage card and when it misses or we can set this to yes. So I'm gonna just set this to yes without a damage card, just on its own. Uh, and we have an option to use the 5e damage calculation. Uh, we don't need to use that, I'm gonna leave it off. Show a player's damage card, a simple version of the damage card. I can leave that off for now. Apply damage immunities, and we're not gonna look at immunities in this, but we are gonna look at it in another video. We're just doing basic combat here. But as you can see, Already, even though we've used the quick setting, there's a couple of things I've wanted to change. We don't want the players doing auto attack roll, but in the game master one, yes, auto attack, auto roll damage if it's needed. We're going to fast forward that attack, fast forward that damage. All damage critical rolls are average results. No, I want to roll damage, not average. Uh, and we can remove the chat card buttons after a roll. 
So again, we can t let's turn that off for now, and then we can come back and look at that. Uh, and there's a couple of other options you can go through yourself. So let's save those settings there. Thank you very much indeed. And then let's have this little combat. So let's open this up again. Uh, and Sorryman is going to have a go. So he's going to move over here. And I still need to have my character sheet open, although I most certainly can add my quarter staff to my favourites, or I can stick my quarter staff on my bar down here, which might be a bit easier. So I'm going to make my quarter staff attack. And one click on that. Yes, I've got these buttons, but I don't need to. It's rolled the attack. I got a 13. The Goblin's Armour class is 15. I didn't hit it. One click. And it's done all that for me and told me I didn't hit. Let's move on to the Goblin's go. So the Goblin's going to target Sorryman right back. Um, and uh, let's pop his scimitar down here just for ease of access. So the Goblin makes his attack with his scimitar. There, there we go. I didn't click it properly. Okay, so again, a card has come up. I've got buttons for attack and damage, but I don't need to click them. It has already said the attack roll, I got a 22, that beats Soriman's armor class. It's automatically rolled damage, four hit points damage. What you didn't see is if I, come back Soriman, if I open Soriman's character sheet, he's now on 34 out of 38 hit points. Oddly enough, that's four. He's taken four damage. Now that's really fast. Remember we had clicked on auto fast forward and things like that really really quick now as the dm if you've got 20 goblins all attacking the party that could be a really slow combat round let's do it let's do another attack right goblin goblin number one it's your attack oops <laughs> have to have the right character selected goblin number one has his attack right that's done he missed goblin number two have your attack Oh yes, you hit, and there we go, you've done your damage. Goblin number three, your attack. Oh, you've missed as well. Goblin number four, it's your attack. Goblin number five, it's your attack, you've missed. Goblin number six, you hit. So very, very quick. Now, don't fall in love with this immediately, because there's still other things that we can do to improve this automation, improve the amount of spam we're getting in chat and things like that. But you can see the difference between no automation or no MIDI QOL automation, so the, the basic D&D &D engine, compared to just fast forwarding the attacks for the game master. Now, I didn't touch the player settings, so the players are going to have to click their weapon, then they're going to have to press attack, then they're going to have to choose whether it was crit hit or something, and then they're going to have to... Um, uh, click their damage roll then they're going to have to roll it and then the DM's going to have to apply it that we haven't touched the player side okay I'm logged in as the DM which is why Sorryman is a DM character um, not a player character for this purpose so that is a little bit too quick in some ways and what if it gets that wrong Sorryman uses a two-handed staff but what if he's using it one-handed because okay, it's a versatile weapon. With this, Sorryman doesn't have a choice. I click that, and that's it. Boom, it, it's done. It's automatically rolled the damage. And go away, Gabe. Thank you, mate. Um, it's automatically rolled the damage, and it's rolled 1d6. That's one-handed damage. So if I need it to... Apologies, that silly uh, Discord. Sometimes I forget to close it before I record. But if I hold down... I've got to select him. So if I hold down the shift key when I click on a versatile weapon, we get this at the bottom. So he's made his attack, but look at the damage. If you can see it, it's very small there. By holding down shift when I've clicked it, it's done 1d8 plus 3. So as long as you hold shift, it will do the versatile damage. So something like a staff, click it, it's going to do one-handed damage, shift click it, it's going to do the versatile damage. So you've got to remember that though, and your players have got to remember that if you automate them. But it's quite easy. Okay, let's clear that. Clear that chat. We'll keep our combat going. Let's um, let's heal our poor dead goblin here. 
let's heal our Sorryman back up to full health as well and then have a look at a couple of those other settings that we might want to tweak just to make that look a little bit different. So we're going to go back into workflow. Now in the Game Master one, we don't want the average damage. I want them actually rolled. We've got remove the chat buttons after roll. If I go attack and damage, that one setting, let's see what that changes in our chat when we do this combat. So, uh, sorry man, if you would oblige me and beat the snot out of this goblin again. One card. We haven't got the attack and, and damage buttons on here, which we didn't need to click anyway. So that's what it's going to do for us. I've missed on this occasion. Let's do it again, see if we can hit him. Uh, do, do, do. There we go. So we've hit him. Again, it's told us he got a 26. Oh, so it was a crit. And if you, you again, it's very small. Our damage was 2d8 plus 3. Because the weapon says, hey, a natural 20 is a critical hit. And this is very convenient that it's just done this for me. Uh, holding down shift and clicking that attack, it's done the attack, it's gone, oh, natural 20, that's crit damage, and then it's rolled, instead of 1d8 plus 3, it's rolled 2d8 plus 3, so it's already knows that that should be crit damage, it's done that, and it's applied it to the goblin, and, and that goblin's just been slaughtered in one <laughs> swipe, and then some, poor gobbo. So that one little change has made quite a difference on here already. So the question is, is as the game master, do you want that level of automation or do you want to slow it down? I didn't want to click that one to configure settings. Um, so we could choose to say, well, what happens if we don't fast forward it? So let's turn off fast forwarding and just see what that looks like. So again, back to our chat, let's clear that. So, sorry, man, if you wouldn't mind pounding this goblin one more time. Quarter staff attack. We've got no attack button, but it is now asking me to manually select whether it's advantage or disadvantage. It has done the roll. It's calculated that it's hit. And because it has hit, it's now asking me... Um, to roll the damage so it's not fast forwarding the damage it's allowing me to roll and potentially make changes so you can see currently it is selecting because I held down shift it's selecting the 1d8 bludgeoning damage plus 3 bonus um, the versatile damage of course which is d8 is what what it is but if I do that attack again without holding shift this time you can see it's got the 1d6 normal, or I could say, oh no, hang on a minute, that was supposed to be versatile, do that one. Yeah, so you might want to do that because it gives you a little bit more control and you might kind of go, oh yeah, I want to make this a critical hit even though he didn't roll that. You can do that if you want to. I mean, this gobbo's dead anyway. Okay, so that's what you need to kind of play with is a couple of those settings to work out what is the right balance for you as the game master that isn't going to fast forward past things and you go hang on a minute what happened why did he die <laughs> it went so fast now one other thing to mention about the speed of that if you have digital dice in your game in other words the module dice so nice which I personally absolutely love it's a critical module for me I have it in every single game the only place I don't have it is here because I don't want to confuse what the mod we're looking at is doing compared to other mods. But if you've got Dice So Nice in, which rolls beautiful dice across the screen for you, it will slow that up because it will go, oh, I'm doing my attack roll and it will roll the dice. Then it will move on to go, oh, did that hit? Yes, it did. Right, I'll do my damage. Roll the dice. So you can slow it up by doing that as well. Um, but the automation is exactly the same. Okay, so the quickest way is to not have those dice on. And there was, I'm not going to be able to find it right now, now I've mentioned it. There was, in here somewhere, it might have been under mechanics. Uh, do, 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 do. I'm going to have a quick scan through to see where it was. Um, there was an option, miscellaneous possibly, about disabling dice. 
I'm not going to find it now. There's so many uh, in workflow, possibly targeting. Da, 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 da. Requires targets to be selected. I said yes. Specials, hits. Somewhere in here, and somebody will know exactly where it is, and is kind of pointing at the screen going, no, it's over there. Um, but there's so many, I lose track. Um, but you can say, uh, I want to put my auto rolls back on, but you can say, actually, don't use, even though you normally use digital dice, don't use them in here. Um, there we go. For attack damage rolls, display with dice so nice guys ghost rolls there's that one um that's not quite the one i wanted it was somewhere i promise it's there somewhere I've definitely seen it um go away moto moto <laughs> all right so hopefully that's been helpful for you to see that how you can speed up the flow of standard combat now we're not even looking at spells yet of course this is just MIDI QOL. This is just automating attack and damage rolls for... It's driving me nuts. <laughs> uh, attack and damage rolls for combat um, using basic weapons. So hopefully that's been useful. It's giving you an idea of what MIDI can do. You might say, I am using MIDI, but I only need to use it for that. I just want to speed up those big combats and make everything flow a lot nicer. In the next video, we will be looking at another one of those settings, possibly saving throws, um, and how we can automate those as well. So maybe we're making an attack that requires a saving throw. How does it handle that? I hope this has been useful. Um, you know, leave a like, leave a comment. Uh, in the next video, we will carry on looking at MIDI QOL. Eventually, we'll get through all of the settings of MIDI QOL, and then we'll be in a position to look at some of the flashy things that are put together, CPR, GPS, um, MISC. If you don't know what those are, stay tuned, you'll find out. Uh, and we can go over all of those and just keep building on this automation step by step so that we understand what we want or what it's doing why it's doing it and whether we in as an individual want it in our game thank you for watching you take care i will see you in the next one